that's special right there. It's one of those special flexible disconnect switches, I guess. This video is brought to you by Sportland. Quality, integrity, and tradition. Today's service call is a office AC that's not working properly. So the customer actually said that they can't control their thermostat. I'll pull up a little clip that I took of the thermostat right now. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with the stat, but I'm gonna start at the AC. Um, I know we're gonna have to change the thermostat for sure, but I wanna see is there any problems with the AC too. Uh, these ACs are probably pretty dirty. I don't think we have serviced them for a very long time. Uh, let's have a look at these filters. Oh yeah, these things are plugged solid so uh, definitely gonna need a good service filters are sucking in there's a belt in there but we're gonna start in the control panel see how uh, the AC itself is working all right this is the uh, the fun display that you're not gonna be able to read on here but it says idle and uh, down here we have no indicator lights uh, showing that the thermostat is calling which would make sense because it's jacked up um, I guess we're going to have to, uh, I don't see anything jumping out at me saying that there's a problem here. The condenser itself, I mean, doesn't look too bad from the surface. It's hard to say what it looks like on the inside, but got the refrigeration rack right here. Actually, that doesn't even look that bad either. Just a little lint, but overall it looks pretty good. That's special right there. It's one of those special flexible disconnect switches, I guess. Um, okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull the filters out. We know that the AC is not going to work with those. And then, uh, well, then again, I don't have filters right now, so maybe I'll wait to pull them out. I don't know. We'll see. Probably going to go back and forth on this one here. All right. Um, I'm back with some filters, and I wanted to clean up this evaporator, but it's not horrible, but it's dirty, but... Usually you can pull these economizer packages out, but this one, it can come out. It's just a little more difficult than I was planning on it being, and I'm probably gonna have to pop the top a little bit. So I'm gonna try for another couple seconds, but I don't wanna have to disassemble this entire unit because it's not that, that bad in there. There's just a good spot right in the middle, but I sure would like to clean that coil. Let's see what the ducks look like. Surprisingly, they look pretty decent to me. Yeah, doesn't look too bad thermostat sensor um yeah, not too bad all right well i'm gonna give it a couple more seconds of trying i'm just gonna pull this little piece right here and see if that makes it any easier if not then we're just gonna have to clean it with the economizer package in place cool it popped out it was just this top retainer once i pulled that out i just had to undo some clips and the thing popped right out so the evap's not too bad but i just wanted to get in here and give it a good thorough cleaning it's best to do it from the inside We'll knock this out real quick. Take the old filters as kind of a catch and then just start wiping this stuff to see the stuff coming out of the coil. So we're definitely gonna rinse it too, but just wipe most of the stuff down, letting it fall on the filters and then I'll pull those out. If I was smart, I'd go get my vacuum, but I'm a little lazy and I don't think I'll need it. All right, we'll get some water on this guy. Give this guy a quick little wet down just to make sure that we have a smooth surface for the coil cleaner. You see how it kind of went down like that? That's because I didn't have it wet enough down here. So you gotta work it from the bottom up slowly. And it'll as the coil gets lubricated, it'll stop falling off. Now notice that time it didn't really fall off. You just gotta do it a little bit at a time, but the coil needs to be wet. It's like that's still dripping because I need to work it up a little bit higher slowly. There we go, that's doing better. All right, so what I'm talking about is how the water will rain off the coil. See, that's not raining off the coil, that's going straight down the drain pan. So we wanna make sure we got a nice saturated coil. Once we do that, 
then we can apply the coil cleaner. So today we're gonna to be using uh, the refrigeration technologies, the Viper condenser coil cleaner. Now, this is condenser coil cleaner, but it's safe on evaporators too, okay? Uh, I have the normal evaporator coil cleaner, but I just wanted to bring one bag on the roof. So this is perfectly safe to use on evaporators. In fact, if you, cons or you mix it correctly and you use it on the evaporator, technically you don't have to rinse it because it's not corrosive and the condensation from the evaporator would rinse it. But in my situation, we're gonna rinse. Um, we're also using their new foam sprayer. Uh, if you haven't seen this on one of my videos yet, it's actually really cool because it foams when you spray it. Watch. Look at that. This thing's awesome. Does a great job of foaming up even this cleaner. So you got to mix it correctly though. But once you mix it correctly, I mean, look at that. You get a nice, good foam action going on. Perfect. So we're just going to let that stuff run down the coil put some on the other side, let it sit for a minute, then we're gonna give it a rinse. All right, even though the coil is already wet and I already applied foam, you're still gonna rinse it from the bottom up because uh, of the slant that it has going on. So a little bit out of time. You also wanna watch out because you can get a lot of soap suds in the drain pan that'll overflow it. So you wanna do this slowly and just rinse. And obviously we're gonna rinse from the other side too. Sneak in here. Gotta be careful because we could be blowing it out the evaporator on the other side. So we want to make sure we're not overflowing anything. Nice and slow. Yeah, we're not coming out the other side. But yeah, it's running down the drain. That's good. We're going to give the drain pan a uh, rinse too. And make sure we blow that out. Some of these Linux units are kind of nice and you can actually get your hand in the drain pan to reverse or back blow the drain line out. So yeah, I could put a union there, but it's even better when I can get my hand back down into here, hit the drain line, and boom. Blow it out this way, that way we know we're nice and clear, and everything's good, so it's a little bit out of time. So I used the yellow condenser coil cleaner, I said earlier partially because I was lazy, but I also like using that too because oftentimes this is a kitchen slash office AC. We get a lot of grease buildup in these units, and this does a pretty good job of breaking down that grease. Um, again, because on evaporators, this is a no rinse. Even though I still rinsed it, I'm not gonna go super crazy and I'm not gonna be worried about it. Now, if you used, like for instance, the blue brightener cleaner, well, yes, you have to rinse the brightener because that is gonna etch the coil and basically disintegrate it. So you gotta make sure you understand how these cleaners work, okay? Um, now we're just gonna go ahead and give this condenser a rinse. Again, trying to get from the bottom up. Um, now, this unit has a split row condenser, but uh, it's not dirty. I kind of pulled it apart and looked on the inside. Don't see the need for it, so we're just rinsing from this way. Uh, there's no way to uh, get, in the, or get on the inside of the coil unless you pull the top and pull the fan motor and fan blade out. And I don't see the need this time, so that's why we're just rinsing from the outside in. Of course, you always want to pay attention and if you need to be clean it from the inside out, that way you can potentially get all the gunk out. But you can see, I mean, this yellow Venom Pack, it's just so, guys, it's just a great mixture. Uh, it works properly. And uh, it's best bet to use that whenever possible because you don't really have to worry about anything. Occasionally, we'll use the yellow, or I mean the blue brightener, but you know, with that, you gotta be very cautious and be very careful. Well, I'd say my evaporator is looking pretty darn good. I'm happy with that. I rinsed it from the inside also. Um, we're going to go ahead and start putting the filters back in. Before we put everything in, we're going to go ahead and put some sanitizer. I got the strike back sanitizer right here. Just kind of spray this evaporator. And uh, you don't rinse the sanitizer. Just leave it on every surface in here. Again, we're not going to clean this entire thing like crazy. Just kills bacteria and all that mumbo jumbo. This economizer, I'm gonna give this a wipe down in here real quick. I just very carefully like tilted it and rinsed off all the big chunks of crap without getting it in the sensors and stuff. So keeping the thermostat sensor dry and the actuator motor and all that. But yeah, that's pretty good. It's not gonna be perfect, guys. So get some sanitizer on that, then we're gonna slap it back together. All right, we're all back together. Rinsed off around the roof as best as possible. I'm not going crazy or anything use the sanitizer where it needed to be used. I'm gonna tell them they need to get someone up here to clean up all those leaves because I don't got trash bags or anything. I'm not gonna do that right now. Plus, they don't wanna pay me to do that. Um, we're gonna fire this guy up. 
uh, I already replaced the thermostat and we're gonna um, make sure that uh, everything works properly. We're hooked up to measure quick. This is a Lennox 5 ton 410A. Uh, this is how we got it profiled. Package unit, 410A, 5 tons, approximately 13 to 16 sear. Um, everything else, I'm not gonna go too crazy with this. So we still got that little glitchy problem with Measure Quick right now. I did make them aware and some other people made them aware too, so I think they're working on fixing it. Um, we're looking pretty good. I mean, for all the numbers. Approach, I don't know, I guess it's on the hair side of being low. They're calling for like eight degrees. Um, I'm not gonna say this guy's overcharged though. It's definitely not overcharged. Uh, everything else, I mean, airflow is pretty close. Guys, I don't see anything wrong with this guy. Refrigeration-wise, I think we're doing good. So, Linux has like a little target right here with refrigerant pressures and stuff. But if you pay attention, it says apply outdoor air temperature to table one, and pressures are for sea level applications, 80 degree dry bulb, 67 wet bulb, okay? Return air, well, we're not ideal, we're not perfect, because we've got 56 degree wet bulb, we're about 70 degree return, um, so you, you can't always take these to be a hundred percent as long as you're relatively close. So 303, 138, you know, we're, we're a little bit under that, but I'm not concerned whatsoever. This unit is doing everything you can do. Don't see any problems. Again, that's because my camera can't read the thing, but it says cooling right now. Uh, no issues. So. This guy's good to go. All right, I wasn't able to show the thermostat after the fact because, and even still, if you guys noticed when I showed the audio of the bad thermostat, or I'm sorry, when I showed the video of the bad thermostat, there was no audio. I actually just looped in the outdoor sounds just so it wasn't just, you know, nothing. But um, we had managers in the office and they were moving around. And then as I replaced the thermostat, there was even more managers. It was getting kind of crowded in there. So I couldn't really show that, but Inevitably, we walked up to the thermostat, right, with their complaint, and I had no control. The unit had, the thermostat had no batteries in it. Um, I went ahead and put batteries in it, not that that was going to solve anything. Um, moved things around, powered the thermostat down, powered it back on, and it just was, it was bricked, basically. You know, it wasn't going to do anything. So I went ahead and replaced it. I put in a Honeywell uh, touchscreen thermostat, and everything was good. Now, um, Again, with the customer's permission, okay, obviously I'm keeping them in the loop 100% of the way. I called the facilities department. I made sure they were okay with me doing what I needed to do. So we did a full PM on this unit, um, or at least what they wanted me to do as far as a PM goes. So we cleaned the coils. We checked and adjust the belt, um, sanitized the coils, cleaned the condenser. The condenser was not that dirty. Um, and then just went through the normal unit operations to make sure it was performing as good as it could. Okay. Didn't really see anything crazy. Um, you know, there's stuff that I don't like. It happens occasionally, you know, that zone sensor being shoved inside the duct. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but that's actually pretty common. We see that a lot. And yes, I know they have duct sensors and different things like that, but you know, if you put a duct sensor and you mount it to the duct, it's difficult to replace, you know, these zone sensors just hanging down in there, even though it's not ideal, they work fine. And surprisingly, they rarely ever go bad. Um, even in some of the ducts that have a lot of grease in them, this one wasn't a greasy duct, but I mean, I, those zone sensors, they tend to last forever. So, you know, I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel when it comes to, you know, the way that this, this building was set up from the beginning. Okay. Um, we need to be able to evaluate equipment. And, and while this one seemed like the easiest call in the world, it is so important as long as you have permission from your boss and the, the customer to look at the big picture. Okay. Yes. I could have just come in and yes, I could have thrown a thermostat on this and moved on. Okay. But I was able to justifiably clean that unit up to make sure everything was operating properly. No, the evaporator was not plugged solid, but it did have some dirt buildup. And even if you see an evaporator that doesn't look bad, it's important that we get some cleaner. We rinse it off because, you know, we could be cleaning inside dirt or just surface dirt. And every cleaning we do is, is you know, helping that thing to stay crystal clear so that way it doesn't become one of these just caked up um, evaporators are just covered in crap. Okay. So it's so important. And I'm talking to my own employees right now. And those other P 
people that don't work for me that you guys are watching this, you guys can benefit from this too. It is so important for us to look at the big picture and don't just walk in and say, yeah, I changed the thermostat and it's working fine. Yes, that is correct. The thermostat was the problem, but we got to look past that. Okay. We've got to do this customer a service. We have to tell them like, Hey, you had a bad thermostat. We went ahead while we were here, changed the filters because they were plugged and went ahead and rinsed off the evaporator, rinsed off the condenser to make sure that you guys are good for the next couple months. Okay. And, um, it's extra work, right? For, for me, you know, I'm slow right now and the customer wants me to do this kind of stuff, right? So I'm going to take every opportunity that I can to do my job and do my job well to give the customer the best service that I can give them within their budget, okay? It's so important that we don't just walk up there, you know, look at the symptom, fix it, and move on, okay? We got to look at everything. Now, in this situation, I didn't see anything else wrong. But what if I did? What if I found something later on down the line? What if when I opened up the control cabinet, I smelt gas, you know, and there was a loose connection? It's that kind of stuff. Our job is to come in here and treat these customers like they're our family, okay? Of course, you know, to, to, to look out for their best interest, to make sure that their equipment is operating 100%. Again, talking with your boss, talking with your company, with your service manager, making sure they're okay with what you're going to do or what you think you should do, and also keeping the customer in the loop. I'm not advocating for anybody to go out there and spend 12 hours on the roof when all you had to do is change a thermostat. No, okay? Uh, this particular call, I think I was there for a couple hours um, because I did have to drive to the supply house to get filters. Now, okay, for example, while I was on this roof, those filters were plugged up on that unit. I called the, the proper people that I had to ask permission from. And I said, I know that every other unit can use a cleaning and filters too. And they said, you know what? We're going to hold off on all the other ones because, you know, for whatever reason. Okay. So I even offered to change the filters on everything and they didn't want to do it at this time. And that is fine. Okay. So be it. I, again, I did my due diligence. I brought the information to them. I let them make the decisions. Okay. So I've said this before. The customer got a big picture diagnosis and they got a big picture quote and they did not approve the big picture quote, but that is okay. Okay. The big picture quote being that I said, Hey, let's change all the other filters on the roof. Okay. But they didn't approve it. And so be it. At least I got the one unit done and I know that it's a hundred percent cleaned and taken care of. Okay. I really, really appreciate you guys making it to the end of this video. Please, if you haven't already subscribe to the channel. Uh, leave me some feedback down in the YouTube comments. A couple things I want to cover. Uh, if you're interested in supporting the channel, check out hvacrvideos.com. I've got hats, beanies, different things that you guys can purchase to help to support the channel. Okay. Um, also, any of the things, the tools that you see in this video, there's affiliate links in the show notes of this video. If you click that affiliate link, it helps me out. It'll take you to truetechtools.com where you can use my offer code big picture with one word, at, but make sure you click the affiliate link. Okay. Use the offer code and you get a discount. Okay. And I get an affiliate commission that helps to support the channel. Okay. So if you guys are interested in purchasing any tools, um, do me a favor, send me an email. Uh, I can generate affiliate links for anything you guys are interested in purchasing. Okay. Um, other ways that you can help to support the channel is just simply watch the videos. That's a really easy one. Okay. Um, you can uh, support me on Patreon. You can support me on YouTube channel memberships. Um, you can support me on PayPal. Uh, also, you can uh, watch my other YouTube channels too. Uh, we have HVACR tools that myself and the overtime guys are making tool review videos. Uh, there'll be a link in the show notes. And then again, uh, I also go live with the HVAC overtime crew on Friday evenings. And we, you know, just kind of have a live stream where we just discussed how everything went through the week. Um, you can check that out. And then I do live streams on this channel, Monday evenings, 5 p.m. Pacific time, uh, work permitting, meaning if I can get off work in time, I go live and I answer all the questions. So again, thank you guys so much for making it to the end. You guys are awesome. All right. I really, really appreciate you. And uh, we will catch you on the next one.